Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, please read the problem and try it on your own. Okay, let's start by reading the context of the problem. A sunflower is three inches tall at week zero. So week zero is a way of saying it's three inches tall, right, at the start. So week zero is kind of synonymous or another way of saying um, the start of when you're measuring it. So this plant has already grown a little bit. And then, apparently, it grows perfectly two inches each week after that. So, not so sure how realistic that is, but uh, it's going about two inches per week. So, but here we're assuming it's exactly two inches a week. Which function, or functions, plural, can be used to determine the height, f of n, of the sunflower in n weeks? So, n weeks means, that's another way of saying, the number of weeks that we're looking at. And f of n is our way of determining the height. Now, you, you know, you might see, um, instead of f of n, you might see h of n or something for height here, but the letter in front is just the name, uh, the letter that we're using for the function, and n is the input. It's the height based on the number of weeks. So which of these three? Well, look at the first example. Uh, it says f of n equals 2n plus 3. Now, logically, this one fits, logically, because here, 3 is our set amount, and then we're adding 2 times the number of weeks that have passed. Let's just show a couple examples to convince you that this works. So let's say we're at week zero. That's f of zero. So zero is our x value. This number inside here is always the, the x value that we're plugging in, or the n value, or the input. So it's two times zero plus three. And what's that? Well, it's zero plus three, which is three. Okay, so it's, that works, right? It's three inches at week zero. What about week one? Well, it should grow two inches each week. So let's see if that works. Two times one plus three, because now our input's 1, is 5. And yeah, it went up by 2 inches. Let's try 2 more. f of 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 7. And here it's going up by 2. And just to really confirm what's happening, uh, f of 3 equals 2 times 3 plus 3, which is 9. So this function works, right? It's going up by 2 each time. You might have also recognized that by looking at the fact that the number next to n, 2 in this case, is our slope. Our slope is the amount the plant's growing by each week. And 3 is our constant or our y-intercept here. So you can think of this growth pattern as a line, a line as well, where the y-intercept is 3, let's say 1, 2, 3. And the slope is going up 2 over 1, right? Up 2 over 1, something like this. So here is our linear function f of n equals 2n plus 3. All right, so this works. 1 definitely works. So now we can eliminate choices 3 and 2 because we know 1 is at least one of the answers. So the question is, is choice 3 an answer as well? Now before we talk about that, let's just pretend, for example, there was another choice. Uh, oh, there is. I'm missing it. There is 1 and 2. See that? I missed that. <laughs> so 2, it doesn't work. 2 doesn't work, why? Well, if we simplify this, f of n equals 2n plus 3 times n and 3 times negative 1. We distribute that 3. We get 3n, right? And then 3 times not just 1, but negative 1 is minus 3. If we simplify this, we get 5n minus 3, and that's incorrect. This function would say that it grows by 5 inches each week. This is our slope this time. Uh, that's not true, right? It doesn't go by 5, it goes by 2. And here, what would this mean? Well, this intercept, this y-intercept, y-int, I put, uh, would mean that somehow the plants are at negative 3 inches, which could make sense if you had, like, a seed in the ground 3 inches below, below ground level. Um, but that's not our situation here, right? It's not starting as a seed and then growing 5 inches each week from that point. Uh, and if you're not convinced, you can try a couple of examples, just like I did right here to see that it doesn't actually work. It won't give you the correct growth measurement. You'll see it going up by five inches each week. So that's out. So by process of elimination, choice four is the answer. It must be. However, it's important to understand how choice three works in case, um, well, you get asked a more complicated question, but more importantly, um, if you want to understand what's happening here, because choice three is really a nice function. Let's go over what it means. All right, so choice three. F of, what does it say? F of uh, n equals f of n minus 1 plus 2. Now, first, at first, and they, oh, and they also say where, this is important, f of 0 equals 3. 
So first of all, they have to define the starting point of our function. Uh, this is the start, right? At f of 0, uh, it's 3. We're given that. So let's write that out. f of 0 equals 3. But what about where we go to f of 1? What do we do there? What does this function tell us? Well, look at what it says right here. Look at this piece. Don't be scared by this piece. f of n minus 1. 1 is our n value, so we plug it in 1 minus 1, and then plus 2. So this is called a recursive function. It's recursive because of the way this term is written. Recursive means that the function builds on the step before it. In other words, if I want to know what happens at f of 1, I have to figure out what happens at f of 1 minus 1, which is the step before it, f of 0, and then add to it. So recursive means that f of 1, to figure it out, you have to go backwards to the step before it and then add to it. That's the recursive nature. It always builds on the piece before it. Notice how different that is from our other function, right? f of n equals 2n plus 3. To find f of 3, for example, we didn't have to know what f of 2 was and then add 2 to it. To find f of 3, we just plug 3 right into this function right here. So that's not recursive. Recursive would mean to find f of 3, we first find f of 2 and then add to it. Um, now, why would we do this? Well, it turns out some functions are recursive. It's just the naturally the way they appear, so we have to deal with that. And it opens the door to some really wonderful mathematics. Here, what, what is f of 0? Well, we figured that out before, didn't we? f of 0 is 3. And that's why you have to define f of 0, because you couldn't begin this function if you didn't know where it starts. f of 0 is 3 plus 2, and that's 5. And look at this, it works. At f of 1, after one week, we started at 3 inches, now we're at 5. It went up 2 inches. Keep going. Just see how this works. What would f of 2 be? Well, that would be f of 2 minus 1 now, right? Because it's always n minus 1 plus 2. And that equals what? Well, f of 2 minus 1 is f of 1 plus 2, which equals what? Well, f of 1, we just figured that out. It's recursive, so we go back to the step before it. f of 1 was 5, plus 2 is 7. And see, it is, it's increasing by 2 each time. Amazingly, right? Um, and with these functions, just take them piece by piece. We'll do a couple more so you can see how this pattern keeps building. I think it's so beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. 3 minus 1 plus 2 this time equals f of 2 plus 2. So this is saying, again, what is f of 3? Well, it's whatever f of 2 was plus 2. f of 2 was 7. We just found that out. Plus 2 is 9. And just in case you're still not convinced, we'll do one more. f of 4 would be f of 4 minus 1 plus 2, which is just f of 3. Right, so whatever f of 4 equals equals f of 3 plus 2 equals 9 plus 2, right? Because f of 3 was 9. Think of this 11. So in general, think about, again, what this is saying. What is f of n dot dot dot? Well, f of n always equals, right, n minus 1, f of n minus 1, the step before it plus 2. That's what it's saying. Um, specifically, where our starting point, f of 0, is 3. Now, it's not that you always have to define f of 0 to get these things going, but to get a recursive function going, you have to have some starting step somewhere, and then everything just builds from that. All right, I hope this helped.